Hello. Um, there seems to be a lot of questions this semester on um, how the proper procedure for creating user-defined functions. Uh, I thought um, rather than holding the online session early this week, which probably should have covered this stuff last week. Okay, we won't go there. Um, I, I'll, I'll just create this little video. Uh, hopefully I can keep it short and sweet. Uh, covering the uh, procedures for writing user-defined functions. Um, I will do this in several steps. Now, um, there are three ways in which to write uh, user-defined functions, and I will cover all three of them. Uh, and and uh, to uh, demonstrate this, I will go over practice exercise 6.2, uh, 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 number eight, uh, and I'll do that in, in two steps. Okay, so first off, we need to open uh, a, okay, you can open a new script file. Um, and th this, this is the way that we used to do them for the first hundred years that we were teaching this course. Uh, the last couple of years, MATLAB or MathWorks has changed MATLAB. Um, and I'll go, go into that in, in just a minute uh, to make it a lot easier uh, uh, for file management, a lot easier for grading, and uh, just overall a much better product. Um, so I'll start off by demonstrating a user-defined function in its own M file. Uh, most important thing is, is you, uh, uh, okay, we'll get to that in a second, but um, I've set my current folder to a new, uh, location here on my MATLAB online into a demos location so you'll see there's nothing in there um, so I am going to uh, do problem uh, exercise problem 6.28 and I'm going to do the first one first and then we'll add the second one so when you're creating a user-defined function the first thing you need to do is the first word in the, the, the function needs to be the word function and then you need some kind of an output variable. This variable can be any name you want, as long as is it a, as long as it is a valid MATLAB function, meaning starts with a letter and has nothing but letters, numbers, and underscores. Um, I just for so I know what it, it's doing. I use output and results. So I'm going to start with output, then an equal sign, and then. This is the important part. The next thing after the, end, the equal sign is the name of the function. This is what you will use in your main script file to call the function to have it perform the operations within the function. So um, I don't think this has any specific name in the problem. So we'll just call it a, a demo um, function. Um, and then in parentheses, you'll have whatever inputs you're going to send to the function from the main script file. And now a main script file is just another M file that has all your variable definitions. It calls your functions. And when you return it to the script file, it takes the results from that and either plots it or puts it into uh, uh, tables or whatever you need to do with it. Um, but it is a, the way we learned at the beginning is a separate M file. This problem has two inputs, an X and a Y. So there is the very first line of your function. And that needs to be the first command lines. Uh, I, it used to be, it had to be the very first. You couldn't put comments before, but that may have changed, but I, I, don't, I don't go down that road. I'm, I'm too old to change. Now, if you put comments afterwards, um, practice exercise, 6.2.8 um, when you type help and the function name in the command window everything after the function that is a comment will come up in the command window so um, and why why because i want to okay so now we write what the purpose of our function is now you um i'm lazy Okay, if I can combine things into a single line, I'll do it. Um, or you can do it in multiples. Um, you know, like we can say, 
a is equal to x plus y. And if you suppress the input, the output in your function, it'll keep it from showing up in your command window. Um, if you're running it and you see the output twice in your command window, it's because it's displaying in the function and then again in your main script file. So, I, you know, unless you want it to show from your function, I would always suggest suppressing the output. Okay, so here, here's what we needed it to do, okay? But if we try to run this now, it will not return anything to the main script file because nothing has been assigned to the output variable. So if we do it this way, then we would have to come down and do output equals A. And you probably ought to get in the habit of ending all of your functions with an and. Um, it's not required if you do it in a separate M file, but it's good practice to do it that way anyway. Okay. So now we did that in three, uh, in two lines, or we could um, do it in one and just assign the output of the function right to um, during the calculation. Quick and easy. Now, this is the cool part. You notice here it says untitled three. We're going to save this into our current directory or current folder. We hit the save file and the save window pops up and it automatically inserts the name that is right here in that function call. And that's what you want to save it as. Okay, we want to save it as an M file under that name. Boom. Now we see over here in the current folder, we have a demo underscore function and it is a type function. Okay, so there, that function is done. So now if we go to our main script file, And we'll come down here and we'll say that um, x is equal to 10, y is equal to minus 5. Uh, we'll suppress these. And to use our function that we just created, we'll just um, create, uh, and you can assign it to a variable. Uh, we're going to assign it to one variable here. And we'll call up our function, which is uh, demo fun, and we'll send it an x and a y. And when we execute this, we see that it calculated it and it got 14. Okay. So now, but on problem 6.2.8, it wants you to have two different outputs. So we're going to come up here and we're going to say output one only. It needs to be in square brackets. So we're going to have output one and output two in square brackets. So now this is output one and output two is equal to x minus y. Okay, and we can save it. It's all it's saved, saved under the, it's the same name. Now when we come back to our main script file, we can still run this and it will still, oh, let's come up here and prove that it's changing. We'll do a clear to uh, clear the variables and clear the command window and boom, we still get only the one return. Why do you only get one return? I'll tell you why we only get one return. It's because we have only assigned the output from the function to one variable. So if we assign this to two variables, um, now when we run it, we get both of them. So 19 minus minus 5 is 24. So that's how you access the multiple outputs in a function. Okay. So now you're wondering, well, you said there's more than one way to do that. I did, and I'll show you. There are two other ways to do this. Um, they're both basically the same, only um, only different is the format in which you're doing it. So I'm going to close this function and just so that this doesn't call it up. Oh, well, we'll just, well, yeah, okay. So we'll come down here. Let's close, uh, let's just delete all this, start over. Um, yeah, we can leave that. Okay, let's leave it. Well, can, I'm going to come down here to the very bottom of my, my M file, and I'm going to put a new cell. A cell is created, just for reference, 
by two percent signs followed by a space and then you can put notes in for what it is if we put all of our functions just the functions at the very bottom of the m file and execute the entire file it will run okay back in the olden days it couldn't do that you were only allowed to have one function per m file uh, but they've changed it so that now at the bottom of the file you can list all of your functions and they will run so we'll come down here and we'll redo that function that we just created um we'll do uh oops, square bracket okay this time we're going to change it up and say the results one get rid of that O. I i've seen it um results one and fred just to show that it doesn't matter what the names are um and we'll capitalize this one just so that it doesn't um interfere with the other function that we have in our current folder and it's still going to have an x and a y input and then um uh we can do uh same function uh different place there we go okay so we're going to have uh results is equal to x plus a y and fred who's mad at me because i didn't capitalize his name as x minus y now when you're doing this method you must end with an end statement um, it, it will not run if you do not have an end statement when you put them at the bottom of the um, bottom of the m file and now we can add another function down here let's do um, um, George 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 there we go George and me um, and we'll do uh, uh, demo fun two and we'll do uh, six nine which has an x and a y input x and a y input um, practice exercise uh, what was it 6.2 6.2.9 okay so george g-e-o-r-g is equal to y and i'm going to do a dot um multiply uh e x p of x just in case we send it a vector and then me is equal to well that's that's not good english that's not good english uh me is equal to um x dot times exp of y and then another and okay so this is just to show that you can have more than one function in here so we'll come up here and we'll rerun the first one we'll change that to a capital and a capital only this time we can't just do well yeah i think we can uh, no you got to run the full function uh, we got to save it demo uh, uh, functions okay where did you uh, 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 oh there we go I, I, oh I'm missing a one right there there we go there we go so when it couldn't find the function over here, it goes down to the bottom of the screen and looks for it down here. And you notice that it didn't do anything with this one. So now we can um, do another and do uh, t equals 1 to 10 and k is equal to 11 to 20 and do a... Um, uh, m comma n is equal to sorry i'm trying to do this quick so that you don't have to sit through a long video slow down i'm trying t and a k okay and let's see and it works okay
So, um, so that's an M file. Okay, so the other way that we can do these is in the live editor. So if we open up a live script, I don't know how many of you have played with this yet, um, but it's it's pretty simple. The difference between a live editor and the M file is, is when you execute the code, the results stays in this window rather than coming into the command window. So we will come down here and um, uh, we'll create some text here and we'll put our functions at the bottom of this file. And again, it's the same thing. We do function um, with our, re our return variables, the function name. And the input variables. And now you'll notice when you hit enter, it automatically throws in an end for you. Um, so um, we'll just do a, a simple, uh, I mean, the same uh, programming techniques goes for multiple re uh, outputs. Um, I'm just trying to demonstrate the uh, um, putting of functions at the end of the file. And then we can come up here and we can do um, t equals 9. Oh, let's suppress that. And g equals minus 5. And suppress that. And say m equals demo r fun uh, t and g. And if we execute that code, there's our answer right here. Okay, so again, if you put your functions at the end, either in the live editor or in an M file, then you only have one file to deal with, or you can do each 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 function in its own M file and have one main file that calls them all and does the plotting and uh, everything else. Okay, um, hopefully this helps. Thanks.